Hi friends, it's Grace and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a little indie fantasy spotlight slash wrap up. Um, I have had a goal for 2022 to read more indie fantasy and I set that goal at at least five books and so far I'm on track for that but I thought that instead of just telling you that I was on track for my goal like I did in my goals like check-in video um, I, I thought that it would be fun to actually do a little bit of a wrap-up of the fantasy that the indie fantasy that I've read so far so that I can like give it a little bit of my attention that it deserves and spotlight it for you and recommend some to you and these are relatively popular books as indie goes but I figure that if I can get more eyes on them then that would be fantastic to support the authors so I wanted to do this video. So I thought that I would just go in the order that I read these books, give you my ratings, some of my thoughts, and hopefully a few things about each book that will help you decide whether it's one that you're interested in and one that you think that you'll like. So the first indie book that I read this year was Illborn by Daniel T. Jackson in late March. And I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. And I talked about how I had some mixed feelings about it, but I do still have a lot of pros and a lot of positive things to say about it. And a lot of people love this book. So I am confident that people should be trying it out. Um, I absolutely think that more people should read it and determine for themselves like what they think. So Illborn is really about four main characters who at the age of around 18 start to exhibit and like develop these various magical powers that are like contrary to anything that they know in the world and may have a connection to the ancient religious conqueror Aduil. And this world is very interesting because the religion is very much opposed to anything like this. So these main characters are definitely forced to keep these powers or anything resembling them a secret and they are drawn into very interesting like wars and conflicts and it turns out that they are being hunted by people whose job it is to look for young people who are starting to display abilities like this and to basically eliminate them. So I'll start with things that didn't completely work for me so that I can end on a positive note with telling you the things that I thought were really great about this book. So I think that with this being Daniel T. Jackson's debut novel, um, his writing needs a little bit of refining. And prose is very like personal, your mileage may vary. It was not my personal favorite type of writing style. And I think that the dialogue needs work. And so some of these things took me out of the story and they prevented me a little bit from fully connecting with the characters. Um, there were great scenes and there were emotional moments where I felt myself being coming very close to making that connection where I absolutely loved these characters. And I just didn't quite get there. But the thing is, I'm really looking forward to another book in this series because I believe that as like Jackson gets more polished and more practiced, a lot of these things are gonna smooth themselves out. Because like I said, these things took me out of the story and it became something that I couldn't ignore. But the reason that it was a negative that it took me out of the story was because I do really think that the story was great. And I said this in my initial wrap up as well, that I think that Daniel T. Jackson is a great like overall storyteller. I think that he had wonderful ideas about what he wanted his world to be, about what he wanted this magic system to be. Um, the religion is very, very sinister and very much like an institution that is threatening and that casts a shadow in this world. And I think that he had a really clear idea of what he wanted his characters to be too. 
And in terms of his characters, he did a lot of really interesting work reflecting on how power can corrupt and how the existence of power is not necessarily a bad thing, but that it can tempt people to make decisions that they wouldn't necessarily have made or when people are in danger, they make decisions in desperation. And I thought that a lot of what he was doing there was really, really interesting. Um, and hopefully I will in the future continue to be able to connect to the characters more and like really feel that more deeply. But like I said, I think that the story concept that he came up with about how this world is maybe coming full circle back in history to this religious conqueror that they had hundreds of years ago and how things are popping up now and magic is manifesting itself that has something to do with these ancient events and how they're all connected. Um, I think that all of those were really great ideas and I'm looking forward to seeing how they connect. And I think that if you are someone who doesn't consider yourself a reader primarily driven by prose, you are probably more likely to really, really enjoy this. And even if you are, um, it's obviously possible that you're going to really enjoy this writing style where I didn't as much. So I'm not saying that it was like objectively bad or anything like that, but it wasn't um, like lyrical or flowery or, po or poetic. So it definitely just depends on your taste. And I definitely think that more people should experience this story because I think that his world building and magic and plot were really, really great. Okay, so moving on, the next self-pub book that I read this year was Of Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill, which is the first book in his The Bound and the Broken series. And this is also a series that is very much like catching some momentum and gaining some popularity in the booktube community, but I don't think it has too much like traction outside of that. So once again, I mean, of course I'm, I'm part of the booktube community, but once again, like if I can get more eyes on this book, that would be fantastic. So Of Blood and Fire is a very solid first entry to this series and I gave it four stars. And this one, um, in contrast to Ilborn, which while it has classic fantasy feelings, also does some very interesting and original things with its magic. I would say that Of Blood and Fire very much feels classic fantasy to me. Um, the people in the world do feel a little bit more modern, but I think that there is some very strong um, classic fantasy influences on Ryan Cahill and I can also see some like Wheel of Time influences on the magic system and things like that. Okay, my phone ran out of storage like halfway through that video and I did not realize it until I was finished and went to go stop the filming when the filming had already stopped. <laughs> But I'm gonna try and recapture what I said about Of Blood and Fire because I know that the like video cat got the start of what I said, but not most of it. So um, I believe I probably already said that I gave Of Blood and Fire four stars and that I really enjoyed it and thought that it was a solid first book. And a lot of what I really liked about Of Blood and Fire actually happened in the first half of the book. And that was because I thought that Ryan Cahill did a really great job of setting up the characters, introducing us to them, letting us get to know them, and letting us really get to care about them. And I think that he did a really great job of like building the friendships between the boys uh, that are like our main character and two of his friends, and then also our main character and his family. And I really love that. I love that we didn't just jump straight into plot and that I actually got a chance to attach myself to these people and to care about what happens to them. And what I mentioned was I personally think that the beginning of the book was stronger because once the plot started hitting, maybe around the 40 or 45% mark, I felt like things sped up a lot. And I do think that Ryan Cahill is good at plotting and that the plot was good. But my personal preference for pacing is that we kind of balance it throughout where there are slower moments with the characters and it's not just like, okay, plot needs to happen now, so now we're gonna do things. So I think that he did better at building emotion and tension and stakes in the beginning 
and those things did pay off near the end of the book, but it wasn't as powerful to me. Uh, I, I felt like we had been jumping from like event to event for a while. So overall, not something that like ruined the book for me. I still thought that it was very good and I honestly think that a lot of people are gonna like that because there are a lot of plot driven readers who will find the beginning of the book slower whereas I was the person who loved it but um, I just like to like look at both sides and I still thought that the book was very good. The other thing that I mentioned is that this book is Build for Dragons and it I believe like Ryan Cahill is going to deliver on dragons in this series. Um, there is a dragon in this book. I think that the dragon is very cool. Um, it all kind of ties into the magic and the world building where I think that the magic is very cool and the world building about the stranglehold that the Empire has on magic is also very sinister and threatening and like I think a great set piece for this series. So. If you're someone who really likes a like classic fantasy sword and sorcery style of book um, and something that like has the magical creatures like dragons, I think that Ryan Cahill and the Bound and the Broken series is something that you are really going to enjoy and you should definitely give it a look and check it out. That was definitely not as eloquent or as in-depth as my first run through, but I still think that I hit the key points of why it's a good book. Then we have the most recent of the three self-published books that I've read this year, which has actually recently been picked up by a publisher, and that is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. And this is a like light-hearted, heartwarming, fun, just nice read. So we have our main character, Viv, who is an like orc and has lived most of her life as a barbarian, working jobs like with a team, and she decides that she wants to retire. She wants to get out of that life and settle down in a city and open a coffee shop. And she has like this nice journey that we see her go on and I think what I really like about this book is that the plot is relatively straightforward but for me it's the emotional payoffs that you get reading this like we see Viv's goals and we see her working towards them and we see her meeting these people who kind of become like a found family and the like we see them working together and we see like how she strives to be accepted by the city and how people start to accept her and start coming to her coffee shop and um, we also see like her developing relationship with Tandri who has taken on work at the coffee shop and their developing relationship and like the sapphic representation in here and the romance is not a main focus but it is a focus and it's very sweet and the whole thing is just really, really nice to read. Um, we do see like an underplot about the less reputable parts of the city and some threats that Viv faces and how they deal with them. But overall, this is just like a very easy read. Like it was very fast to read. I blew through it because I was just liking it so much. And on the whole, it's just a lovely book. Um, I don't even think I mentioned that I gave it four and a half stars, but I really, really loved this and I would totally widely recommend it. Um, I think that people who like a slice of life with a little bit of romance will really, really love this. So after this second try, which like, please, dear God, I hope my phone has filmed all of this. Um, that is it for this video. Uh, I really hope that you liked it. Please like if you did like it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. And I will, of course, as always, have my Discord, Patreon, and socials linked in my description below if you're interested in any of that stuff. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye!